Like there, there was this one woman at my work in particular that was pregnant and a vegan. She said she was worried about me. And I appreciate the underlying sentiment, but I kind of, in my, I didn't say it to her. But I just felt like, you know, to be honest, I worry about your developing offspring, <laughs> which is developing without, you know, sufficient protein. And, and I've seen studies on, you know, on the underweight of birth rate of people that don't get enough protein during pregnancy. So I just thought it was a bit hypocritical, to be honest. Like I ate a sausage a while ago and I didn't realize it had, I think it was like tapioca starch in it, a, t- a tiny, tiny bit. And I noticed my mood just when I felt the anxiety coming back. So it was, it was quite amazing really how sensitive I got to it. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Friday. There we go. Good. Ollie, where are you located, man? Uh, I'm in Salisbury, England at the moment, just visiting my mum for Christmas. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you, I assume you're, are you in the UK normally? Sounds like you got the accent, so you must be. Yeah, I'm in Bristol, England. Bristol, England. Okay, nice. Well, good. Well, welcome. Glad to have you here. I guess it's evening time for you guys over there. Yeah, Um, five o'clock. 5 p.m. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, I guess we'll just get started. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, I'm studying psychology at the moment. I also work part-time as a support worker, helping people with epilepsy and learning difficulties part-time. So I keep pretty busy. I've been doing the carnivore diet since August fifteenth. What what and, uh, uh, what what prompted you to go try carnivore? What was going on? Well, my, my uh, mental health wasn't doing too good. I've kind of been going through a cycle of um, being hospitalized every few years for uh, psychosis, and I kind of found myself kind of getting up to that uh, peak again of hospitalization. And um, I was in contact with my GP. And they sort of wanted to get me back on sort of quetiapine or lithium to sort of mood, mood stabilizers. And um, I just didn't want to go back on those things because they're sort of they're quite invasive forms of treatment. So you'd mentioned you were, you were, you've been hospitalized for different episodes of psychosis. Uh, is that, yeah. is that fair to say? What, and, and how, how long have you been dealing with that? Uh, since I was 16 years old. And you are how old now? Uh, 23, 23. So seven years. And you mentioned lithium, quetiapine, um, as, as some of the medications you had been on, what was that, um, associated with? Was there a particular diagnosis, you know, uh, you know, that you, that you were um, dealing with? Well, I think I, I used to mess around with drugs a lot when I was a kid. So, yeah. um, it was dry, it was drug induced. I thought it was a good idea to take 900 milligrams of LSD at 16 years old. So, okay sort of completely sent me off the rails really i mean i I, to be honest i don't even know any of the 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 lsd dosaging that people would normally take i have not had no interest in that uh personally but so that started it but i mean were you continuing to use lsd over the years it led to these psychotic hospitalizations or was there something else that was happening besides that uh it was just one it was just one time one, one time use of it yeah just completely fragmented my mind and made me lose kind of connection with reality and I kind of never really got back for years and years and years and uh it affected my mood regulation uh, up and up until obviously this year I was still um re- really suff- suffering with it and um that, that was when I decided to do the diet um this year yeah. so you had one episode where you took a I guess assume is a, a large amount of LSD it led to psychotic episodes and they just kept kept going on based on that one one dosage is that fair to say yeah yeah it was like i never came down wow interesting i guess that's a, a, a another reason why you may not want to use drugs i mean I'm, 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 i think there's plenty of reasons why you don't want to do that but uh interesting so um and so you had these episodes and so the doctors were putting you on a bunch of medications is that is that how that went uh, yeah they were putting me on um you know, so they, they'd sedate me when I went to hospital and then they'd try and le- level you out with sort of quetiapine and antipsychotics. Okay. Did those help? All the medications help? Um, not really. No. Okay. okay. Um, so you're dealing with this for six, I guess, almost seven years because you've been on carnivore for just a short period of time. What made you want to try a carnivore diet? I, you know, I'd, I'd heard all of these, um, I'd, I'd been watching a lot of your podcasts and, um, well, watching a lot of content creators talking about, you know, fixing people's physiological disorders, you know, autoimmune diseases and stuff like that. And I wondered if there was a, 
a, a mental side to it as well. You know, if I was putting all of this, because I, my, my diet before wasn't particularly that good. I mean, I was eating, you know, just sort of uh, pasta and stuff like that and in, incorporating meat into it. But I wondered if there was a way that if I, I could heal myself a little bit with meat. Okay. So you're wondering that and you sound like you started this August. So not that long ago, it's only, you know, it's December now. So, you know, what is that? Uh, four months, something like that. Tell us what has happened since you started doing a carnivore diet. Uh, lost a lot of friends <laughs> that, that, that were sort of vegetarian or vegan. That was uh, one side. But the first thing I noticed is my energy was, um, was, it went low for the first bit, I guess, because I wasn't that fat adapted. So I was sort of still getting used to that whole part. But then I started noticing the first thing I noticed was about after the first week or two, my mood was just really good. It wasn't, it no more felt like I was on an emotional roller coaster going up and down. It was kept sort of like homeostasis, you know, almost. It was just kept really good and sort of even. Uh, and then after a while, my mood started, I just felt good all the time. I no, more, I no longer had these really big dips of feeling almost manically depressed. I just felt good all the time. It was, it was unbelievable, really. I started just to tell everybody I knew about it and they were like, yeah, well, it's probably not because you're eating beef, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I just felt so good. I didn't really care what anybody thought. You know, you said you'd been hospitalized over and over again due to psychosis. Did that go away? I felt better than, you know, you know, not, not being ill would have been great for me. Just feeling like I could say, oh, I feel fine. But it's gone just leaps and bounds over that. I feel great. That's the, uh, that's the amazing thing about it. I, I you know, I, I had I had an appointment scheduled with my GP in October, but I cancelled it because I just felt so good. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I said, if you're if you don't need to go, right? No reason to go. Yeah. You you know you'd heard people improving their health on on carnivore, which clearly it's it's happening we see i see that literally every day in fact i, I spent most days interviewing people where their health improved doing this and you're you sound like you're another one what did you start eating or how did you transition into this diet because obviously if, if you've gone from being vegan or vegetarian i feel like it would be take a lot longer to become fat adapted but i sort of was, was already eating meat so i sort of just dropped the you know the heavy carbs like pasta and potatoes and just sort of went straight for eating uh 20 fat minced beef ribeye steaks I, I incorporated a bit of mackerel in there to get my omega-3 some organ meat i was eating pork liver and bacon eggs i just started to eat all of, all of those things and just ate until i was fully sati um, satiated and how, how long did it take you to uh notice a difference about after a week i started to really feel oh something's definitely different and second week was just just feeling good and and your your I guess I don't know if you have family around. I mean, it, I mean, people that around that have been around you for years, did they notice a difference? Yeah, I mean, they said my mood was really good. I was a lot more extroverted. Yeah, and I, I think I was, I was. I also started working out a lot. More. I'd already been working out, but I noticed it was I was building muscle a lot quicker as well, and just looking after myself a lot better. Did you? Um you know, decide to do this. Did you get any support? Were there any su people supporting support over this or were they just kind of discouraging to you from trying this? Everyone told me to stop. They told me that I was going to become ill, become sick. I was going to, you know, get scurvy. <laughs> <laughs> My bowel movements, were, I was going to be constipated. So I just knew it was a load of BS. So I just, you know, just kept going because I knew how I felt. You know, I just listened to myself over everyone else. If you can kind of go through and describe what you're eating day to day, how long you've been doing it, how much food you eat, you know, do you focus on protein and fat? Uh, well, today I eat just half a kilo of 20% fat beef and I haven't eaten anything else all day. You know, usually back in the day when I was eating carbohydrate, a lot of carbohydrates, I'd, um, I'd have almost feel tired in the middle of the day, I guess, because I was eating in the middle of the day and then sort of digesting that, which would make me feel pretty sleepy but yeah i haven't eaten anything else all day today um but not normally i have some um I, I quite like pork belly as well that's one i forgot so many so much fat in it it just keeps you going all day i can just eat half a kilo of that in the morning and then um just be fine so i think that's the one thing that i really like is that you can skip out lunch almost you can just have a really uh satiating breakfast and then skip all the way till dinner time so as far as you know like i said people told you not to do this, you lost a, 
you know, you said you lost a lot of vegetarian and, and vegan friends <laughs> yeah. from this. Are they, are they just uh, unhappy to see yeah, you get healthier or what was the deal? Well, yeah. University campuses these days uh, are full of angry vegans. I found <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think you see a lot of them are doing it for the ethical side. So I guess they feel like, I don't know, I'm worse than somebody that's an omnivore. I'm just exclusively a murderer. I well, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting <laughs> because um, you probably eat less food, you know, overall than you would as an omnivore. And, you know, food production requires a lot of animals, you know, being poisoned, uh, pesticides, and you're not probably contributing as much as that as somebody else who's on an omnivore diet in fact as carnivores we probably are responsible for less overall animal death now to think as a vegan or a vegetarian that you're not killing animals is just totally naive it's completely yeah my dad my, my dad lives in devon which is like in the countryside and he's got all these fields next to him agricultural fields and every year i'll just see the farmer completely decimate it with pesticides grow his monocultures on there harvest it completely shred away the topsoil then fertilize it you know and then just the, the whole cycle starts again and it just it's just so bad for the environment to be honest. well yeah and, and not to mention that all the the pesticides where they kill even just the insects and small animals but then uh, up the food web you know the birds and other animals that rely on those are also dying they're also mm. are still starving then, starving so yeah go ahead and then they can sort of run off i heard of like eutrophication mm-hmm and I, I, I find that completely decimates the, um, the 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 pond, the ponds, and all the waters around. And just, I think a lot of these people don't, you know, like you said, they don't take that into account. All those other factors. No, they don't. It, 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 they just have a sort of a, somebody shows them a picture of a cute pig, and they think, "Oh my god, I'm saving a cute pig." Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, they're they're still probably even in many cases depending on what they're eating, killing more animals. So you said you'd been hospitalized many, many times, and you felt like you were starting to go down that route again. You switched. Have you had any issues with being hospitalized since you've gone carnivore? No. Um, yeah, I was sort of, in, in, I don't know if you know, but in, in the UK they call it uh, sectioning, when you get sectioned. Okay. Yeah, like you're, you know, you're deemed as like a danger to yourself or, or society, so they sort of have to keep you on a secure psychiatric unit um but no i haven't been in there since i was 20 21 but i felt that kind of it coming on again or feeling like just completely unstable and like losing my grip so um but yeah i think carnival has um completely saved my life to be honest not being too dramatic either. yeah no i mean I, I i i hear that fairly frequently and and yet I don't know if you even engage with these crazy wacko vegan people anymore, but I mean, if, if, you know, they, if you say, Hey, this is, this is literally helped save my life. Do they have a, do they have a response to that or, or, or have you not entertained them with that? You know, I just say how I feel and they say, well, give it time. Like there, there was this one woman at my work in particular that was pregnant and a vegan. And she said that she was worried about, she said she was worried about me. But I, and I appreciate the underlying sentiment, but I kind of in my, I didn't say it to her. But I just felt like, you know, to be honest, I worry about your developing offspring, which is developing without you know sufficient protein. And I've seen and, and I've seen studies on you know on the underweight of um, births, birth rate of people that don't get enough protein during pregnancy. So I just thought it was a bit hypocritical, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it it is kind of uh, unfortunate to see that because we 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 know that particularly with developing developing minds they're at significant risk for lack of uh of a lot of nutrition that they're they're leaving out unfortunately okay so um you are you in university right now so you're in in university yeah second year of university what do you what are you studying uh psychology psychology okay and are they well i don't know if you get in you don't have any nutrition component of that do you i'm sure they don't talk about nutrition uh no they don't yeah, it's probably a good thing. They probably screw, they probably <laughs> screw it up. <laughs> so I remember. Yeah, I, I took a number of psychology classes at one point. I, was, I, I did. Uh, I did probably. I don't know. I took probably fifteen hours, sixteen hours of college credits in psychology for for a weird reason. But anyway, I took that years ago at the University of Wyoming, which uh, was interesting. What does your day to day diet look like these days? You mentioned a little bit of 
grow out mints and steak and eggs and stuff like what do you mm. on a daily basis what are you eating uh, i eat about twice a day i forgot to uh, say uh i, I also eat uh, pork belly mm-hmm. which i i really like because it's you know about 1900 calories and half a kilo so yeah pork you know, belly i eat that in the morning <laughs> yeah it's pretty tasty for those who like it you know you got it. how do you cook it i've got an air fryer Mm-hmm. So I normally just stick it in there. Okay, a little bit of salt. twenty minutes, a little bit of salt perhaps, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty strict with it though. Like, salt is about as far as I'll go with seasoning because I I found that I'm pretty sensitive to um like I, I ate a sausage a while ago and I didn't realize it had I think it was like tapioca starch in it, uh, like a, t- a tiny tiny bit, and I noticed my mood just when I felt the anxiety coming back. So it was it was quite amazing really how sensitive I got to it. Interesting, so I'm pretty strict. Yeah, it's interesting because some people say it's rubbish. You know, how could you, how could, how could food or something like that affect you? But again, we see that not infrequently. We see people talking about that, that, and you can't just say they're maybe they're, they're just everyone's lying. It doesn't make sense to do that. Um, as far as um, difficulty, how I mean, you're in you're in university, and you know, is it affordable for you to be able to eat this way? Yeah. The, what I like is that the fattier the cut of beef mince, the cheaper it is. Uh, you know, you see the five percent fat is just mm. really expensive, but the twenty twenty five percent is like one pound seventy nine yeah. for half a kilo, and pork belly is really really cheap. So I can eat I can eat for under five pounds a day and get more calories than I ever would from vegetables mm-hmm. and nutrition. Do you, have you had any sort of negative effects so far from this diet? Is there any problems that you've had? Only during the first bit, uh, obviously, with the whole sort of to- with the toilet situation, it was quite that was quite hard when I was sort of transitioning. Then you know, uh, everyone sort of says they're going to get quite bad diarrhea. That was quite bad, but mm-hmm. it's kind of gone away now, really. Okay. And um, has it? I mean, obviously, you know, not being admitted to uh, an emergency room for a psychiatric episode has got to help. But I mean, have you noticed it improved your, your ability for to focus in school or any cognitive benefits? I've been getting all first uh, grades here, which is like sort of a, a equivalent. Whereas in the year before I was getting sort of B's. Mm. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I can't make a sort of a direct a causal relation between that and the meat. I don't know if I've just revised harder, but maybe the meat helps me sort of focus better. I don't know, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. And some people, some people will notice it. They feel like they're cognitively a little more focused, but that's fine. I'm, you know, your grades are better, so that's got to be good. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, you know, let me just ask, cause you know, I, I, I spent a long time Simon in university, but what is, uh, what is the, the atmosphere there t- today? And I'm not sure what, what school you go to. I know some, there's some places in the U- UK is a particularly, uh, veganish place. I mean, it's still a very fringe minority, but they're, they're, they're maybe slightly more, I don't know, more obnoxious or more, more, aggr- I mean, they're in there, you know, demonstrating and pouring, pouring milk and, you know, out in different rest, you know, uh, grocery stores and whatnot. Um, do you find that to be present on the university campus very much? Yeah, they're all pretty carnophobic. You know, like in the canteen, um, they were selling wraps with like, you know, salmon, chicken, sort of, uh, sort of Asian style. And I said to the lady, oh, can I just get the salmon and the chicken? And they were like, no, you, that, that, you've got to buy four. That, that would just be a tiny portion of the wrap. You've got to buy four, four wraps if you, want, if you want the meat. So, so I ended up spending like, I was just so hungry. I didn't care. I ended up spending what would have been a three pound meal. Ended up spending like 15 pounds mm. just to get enough salmon and chicken, which didn't have a lot of fat in it anyway. So it didn't really work. But it's pretty difficult if you want to be a carnival going to the canteen because i saw your um other podcast with uh, the guy that does uh carnival camaraderie and uh he said he was running into you know some similar stuff on his oh, campus yeah, they're yeah, supporting he's... people with that potato yeah. diet potato only diet but they're not supporting people that just want to eat meat yeah i think he's at ucla or us i think he's ucla i think if i'm not mistaken so yeah. maybe usc i can't remember but anyway yeah so I, yeah it's it's it it is sort of you know i guess a little bit challenging depending on where you go like if you're going to, on an airplane they're not going to, they're not going to they're not going to feed you a steak i can guarantee that you know 
the, no. uh, yeah. So it's, you know, like I said, a lot of it is, so do you, eat, do you eat, prepare most of your own meals or are you on a meal plan at the school? Yeah, I just, I just, uh, I bring meat in with me because it's just, yeah, not economically viable to do it with the canteen. Has, has any people that knew you like longer, you know, a few years ago when you were dealing with all the psychotic stuff that have noticed a difference mm. in you? Uh, my mom, she's sort of been there for me the most um, and been there through all of the hospitalizations. She, uh, I've got her almost trying the diet now because mm-hmm. uh, she can't she can't believe it she just she's she thinks i'm on some sort of medication and not telling her about it did, um, are you i'm right now seriously seriously i just feel amazing did you get off the quetiapine and the lithium and you're off all that stuff now yeah i was off it for about a year before i'm um, starting the diet okay what, what, I mean, what made you come off of it? You just didn't like the way you felt on it or was it something you were just didn't need anymore? Yeah. I feel like I didn't need it. And the side effects are quite bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you can wake up in the morning and feel like you've had 20 pints the night before. Yeah. I, I don't know what, uh, you know, I don't know what the long-term effects of a single dose, high doses of LSD. Do we, I mean, have you looked into the, what, how long that's supposed to, how long that can affect people? Yeah, I met some people that are, that, are, that are never leaving that place, that uh, hospital that I got out of. They've been in there for years, and they took less than me. So the doctors always tell me that I'm pretty lucky. Well, I'm just, I, I get, you know, I'm just wondering what at the time when you decide I'm going to take this giant dose of LSD. What was what was a thought going on there? Do you remember? Or was it just you weren't thinking very well? I was with a friend, and we'd just come back from a club and done some ecstasy. And a friend had given me all these tabs of LSD that had like pictures of Vishnu and like Indian gods on them. And I thought, oh, I must just be like ecstasy. I'll take three. But I didn't realize that they were like 300 milligrams each. Which And so the active dose is kind of like 100 milligrams. You'll start to notice something. So I think I took almost 10 times the active dose. And I'm already on top of ingesting ecstasy so it was just way too much for a 16 year old developing mind to handle really and it just completely blew me out of my body I was complete depersonalization it just went on for hours and hours and hours for like 12 hours so uh, yeah what were, yeah, i was going to say uh, with the, the short-term effects did you were you hospitalized right after taking the dose at some point like the next day or something like that or no it wasn't until a few weeks later that my mom took me to hospital because she was worried about me do you, I mean, you may not even remember that time. I mean, I mean, were you just out of it the whole time for two weeks or something? I couldn't sleep. Like my energy was just through, through the roof. I was doing some weird stuff. Like yeah. I was just like, I'm not me anymore. And like, I'm not Ollie Humbly. I, like, I was like running around in time saying I'm God. I started just wearing a V for Vendetta mask everywhere. I was just doing some weird stuff. <laughs> It was quite strange. So, I mean, I would assume you're not tempted to do those things anymore, right? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing, right? I quite like the quote by Alan Watts, like psychedelics are like a phone. Once you've got the message, put down the phone. I feel like I, I, I got the message. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like when, you know, there's a lot of like, what, I mean, how, I mean, because I, I, you know, like I said, I'm not in this culture anymore, but how popular our drugs today i mean are there still a lot of people using them or is it sort of just kind of a fringe thing yeah in in bristol in england where i am it's sort of a rite of passage everybody does drugs mm. teenagers where i am the hospitalization rate is pretty high the, the suicide rate in universities is even higher i, mean, I don't know if the two are synony- synonymous or correlated but drugs is just rampant in bristol yeah, it's a shame. And I know I, I saw a recent stat out of the UK looking from, I think it was 2016 to 2020, the, the number of young adults, you know, either teenagers or early 20s, something like a 40% increase in antidepressant prescriptions in, in, in just in four years, which is an enormous amount. And so you've got an enormous number of kids that are depressed for whatever reason. Well, you know, your diet growing up was what? Just standard kind of diet anything special any a lot of junk food or what were you eating uh pretty good my all like pretty good home cooked meals by my parents you know just on on the four meals sunday roast you'd have you know beef or pork and then in the in the week you'd have a curry and just have meat in so you're pretty average really okay and then 
So going, I mean, did you ever try sort of plant-based and vegan vegetarian? You said you had a lot of friends. I don't know if you ever tried that. Yeah, I was vegan for a few years, then vegetarian, then omnivore, and now carnivore. So I've sort of done the full spectrum, really, and I know which one feels best for me. Well, which one Which one feels best to you? I'm assuming you're going to say carnivore, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely carnivore. Otherwise, I'd still be a vegan if that felt the best, but that yeah. was... It was around that time, actually, when I was hospitalized the second time I was ve- I was heavy vegan. Mm. Okay. And f- f- extreme fatigue, that's the worst thing I found about it. Because people, when they're on the vegan diet, they always say they feel really good for the first few months. And I'm thinking, well, there are extraneous variables there because you've cu- when you're vegan, you tend to cut out a lot of processed foods, which is why I think they feel good or why I felt good for the first few months. But then uh, gradually the sort of B12 deficiency and the lack of, pro- um, you know, bioavailability protein i think it creeps up on you after a while what what made you decide to want to go vegan back then was a lot of peer pressure or you did you honestly think you were going to help yourself or what was the deal uh i was into quite a lot of like uh spirituality and sort of um sort of sort of yogi mystic um speakers like ramdas and a lot of them had this sort of key principle axiom that was um your your energy state in your body is affected by what you ingest. And if you ingest sort of dead animals, you're sort of ingesting sort of a negative energy state and it's going to make you on a lower state of consciousness. So I was sort of wrapped up in this metaphysical ideology. Yeah. So um, they were like, but if you eat all these things that are alive and, you know, you just pull it out of the ground and eat it, it's going to make you all resonant and bubbly. So that was sort of yeah, the train I, of thought that I tried. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I always kind of smile at that sort of stuff and they talk about that the vibration plane and it's mm. interesting you know it, it's I, I i you know I'm, I'm very skeptical if there's anything to that realistically although i, I know there are people who believe in that pretty pretty strongly so um so as far as you know what what made you wanted to go into psychology just out of curiosity was it was it did, would your experience drive you that way or is it just uh, you've always had that sort of interest yeah i've always been interested in uh, the mind and how it works. And I feel like psychology is almost that as far as you can go into the pseudo scientific sort of spirituality while still sort of retaining a scientific program. But I think it was Jordan Peterson. I started to listen to his lectures and, um, yeah, he was the one that really inspired me to get into psychology. Yeah. He's also adopted, you know, a carnivore diet as well as you, I'm sure you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, interesting. So what, uh, you know, as far as uh, you've been on this, so August, so it's not that long, four months. Are you, I mean, any plans to change it up? Or are you, you're happy where you're at or what's, what's the thoughts? Yeah, I think I've, um, I've gradually been reintroducing things to see if they had an effect. Like I'll have a coffee with some milk sometimes in the morning. And that, that doesn't seem to make a, make a change. So I think I'm just going to keep it how it is. Just um, beef, ribeye, pork belly. Uh, occasional macro just keep it like that keep it simple yeah that makes sense uh if it works for you you know like i said if it works it works you know we see the headlines over here and, and some of that is you know what's going on actually are you concerned about uh like the university banning meat or anything like that is that is that something they talk about or is it pe- people pushing for that yeah i mean they can if they, if they want to do that it's, it's, up, it's up to them but I'll, I'll just keep on bringing meat into school and no one's going to stop me from doing that um what if they what if they said you're not allowed to bring meat into school i mean because i mean that, you know there's some places actually there's actually a couple schools like that there's a couple uh private young kids schools where they have a vegetarian menu and they will not let the kids bring in their own lunches which i think is terrible <laughs> but Anyway, well, I'll, I'll say I'll say I pay ten thousand pounds a year for this course. I'll bring in what the hell I want. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I, I agree. I think it's I think it's I think it's uh, silly not to. But there are people that would would you know if they had their way, they would definitely push for that. Outside of just changing your diet, have there been anything else you've done that has helped your mental health, sleep, better sleep, exercise, you know, light exposure, anything else you've used? Yeah, I'd, I'd say working out has definitely improved improved my mind. I set up a gym in the back garden. I bought loads of gym equipment, sort of a bench press, you know, one of lat- lateral pull downs, pull up bar. Uh, so yeah, I find just going out of there and doing workouts has just really helped my mind. But that's another, that's one other thing I noticed um, because it's recently here, it's been like minus two, minus three. So I find it a lot more harder to discipline myself to go out into the gym uh, in the garden. And I thought, oh, no, I'm going to lose all of my gains. But, you know, it's been a few weeks now of just focusing on studying and not working out as much. And 
I, I don't seem to have lost as much as when in the past I was on a different diet. I seem to have, I think because, you know, I must have my protein level up quite a lot. I've been able to retain my muscle a lot more, even when not working out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that just makes sense. We know that, you know, having adequate proteins kind of at least have you hang on to it a little more. Obviously adding, uh, lifting onto it's going to make it even better. Um, what is there anything else we, we you want to mention that we failed to talk about? No, I think we've covered everything I wanted to talk about. Are you participating in social media? Is that something you do or do you share your story anywhere or? That's something you're interested in? No, I normally just keep it sort of um, direct messaging with family and friends. Okay. Okay. Well, Alia, thank you very much. This is good. I mean, I'm I'm very glad that you figured out how to not be in, you know, having these psychotic episodes anymore. And I wish you the best. And thank you for spending your your evening with us. Good luck with the school. Uh, if there's anything we can do, let us know. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow then. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.